Hey guys. Oh, how I miss you. And so does Vincent, of course, like always, we really miss you. Um, everything's going fine over here. I just, um, like I said, I have some circumstances I'm dealing with right now that I will be through at some point. Um, I'll let you guys know. I'll try to keep you updated on how I'm doing. But um, it's going to be a little while before I could be super regular about videos. Um, I'm not sure how many I'll be able to do. I'm trying to get at least one to three in per week, so I'll keep you guys updated. But today, without further ado, I want to talk about our... Um, topic for day, which is the five most important dietary tweaks, which comes from an article from Dr. Michael Greger's website. I printed out here because it's a really good article and because I'm going to talk about it. Um, so I did a little video about this recently. Um, Dr. Greger had an article where he was talking about the seven, um, there, these, um, lifestyle factors. If you don't have these factors in your life, it's likely that you're going to have some diseases. You're going to have some major issues cropping up. These things I was talking about before, just very basic things that we all know about. Not, And I have it pinned up actually on my board up here. This is my little board of like quotes and things I'm trying to keep in mind and stuff. I keep it pinned up just so I can kind of remind myself of these things, but not smoking, not being overweight, being active, eating fruits and veggies, having low cholesterol, having normal blood pressure, and having normal blood sugars. So these are the what he calls the simple seven, the seven things that can lead to your um, longevity, lead to your better health, that sort of thing. So I talked about that before, and I want to talk about this particular um, article that he just published. I think it was yesterday, or maybe it was today, actually. It's probably today. But... It's about five things he says he calls the five most important dietary tweaks. Now these, I'm doing a video on this because this simple seven, that's kind of hard to do all those things all at once. It's a lot of things that seems overwhelming. It's important to get there, right? But you, it's a process. Like we all have to kind of go through this process. So let's talk a little bit about this um, article he has here. So I'm going to just move spots for a sec. Next, I want to sit down and get comfortable close my closet door so you can't see my messy closet. <laughs> all right, let's take a little seat here. So he's talking about, um, first of all, how unfortunate it is that our adherence to healthy lifestyle patterns has decreased um, during the last 18 years. He says obesity is up, exercise is down, and the number of people eating just five servings of fruits and veggies per day dropped like a rock. And we didn't start out that great to begin with. He's totally right. I mean, how many people do you know that have no idea what the nutritarian diet is that just eat a standard American diet? How many people do you know get five fruits and veggies in a day? I remember like back when I was in college in my 20s, trying to get five fruits and veggies in a day. I would try. I never did it, right? Like I barely ever did it. I rarely had vegetables and the, the fruits and veggies I ever had were pretty much always fruit because those were easy, you know? And tasty <laughs> um, so when you're actually really putting focus on trying to do this it becomes a little bit easier because you make it part of your life but otherwise you know if you're just a standard American diet it typically diet or it typically doesn't go very well so um, only 3% of Americans at the turn of the 21st century had the following four healthy lifestyle characteristics not smoking not being overweight five daily servings of fruits and vegetables and exercising um, and he says, whether people were wealthy or college educated, doesn't matter. No subgroup even remotely met clinical or public health recommendations. <sighs> it's crazy. It's terrible. It's very sad. It's not getting better. That's the part I think that's hard is when we sort of get into this community and we start talking about this stuff and we make it really a big part of our lives. We think, you know, oh, since we hear it and we see it on Facebook and we're doing all these things all the time that... It must be getting better but it's really not like it's it's really not getting better and that's what's kind of scary the worst part about it where are people falling down the most it's the food part right like how many people do you know think that it has to do with exercise like right how many people do you know think diet first it's actually not a lot of people they think they need to get on the treadmill and you know walk off those pounds kind of a thing um, you don't realize how easy it can be and how much great change it can make if you actually just use your food to do this. So let's see, what else does he say? In terms of life expectancy, the US is down actually. The people of Slovenia live a year longer than citizens of the US actually, and this is because of diet. Five most important dietary tweaks. So we talked about this, the simple seven, which have to do with exercise and things like that too, but what are the five dietary tweaks that we can make right now that will get us a lot of bang for our buck? Here they are. Number one, don't eat enough fruit. Number two, we don't eat enough nuts and seeds. Number three, we eat too much salt. 
Number four, we eat too much processed meat. And number five, we don't eat enough vegetables. Studies that have looked at diet quality and chronic disease mortality risk found that those scoring higher, uh, you know, like more whole foods, that sort of stuff, reduce the risk of, risk of dying prematurely from heart disease, cancer, and all causes of death combined. There's now an overwhelming body of clinical and epidemiological evidence illustrating the dramatic impact of a healthy lifestyle on reducing all-cause mortality and preventing chronic diseases, like heart disease, etc. So the point here is that you hear a lot of naysayers, right? And it's in the media too. We hear all over the media meat's good for you, butter's good for you, cheese is good for you, all these things are finally good for you, right? Which is not true. Uh, we're getting a lot of conflicting information in the media. But the point is that the the overwhelming amount of evidence that we have from the scientific community, it's not conflicting. It's not conflicting at all. It's showing that a whole foods plant-based diet is the best thing that you can do for your longevity, avoiding these kinds of um, diseases and things like that, right? And we know that we're drinking the Kool-Aid already, right? Well, Kool-Aid, so to speak. Maybe it's like chia seed lemonade or something like that. But yeah, we're definitely drinking that stuff. And we believe it and we know it to be true. And we're trying to live that lifestyle and help other people to understand it. So the reason that public health professionals are so keen on measuring lifestyle char characteristics is because modest improvements may have extraordinary effects. We know that diet is so important and it's our job to, first of all, put this into practice in our own lives, and then second of all, try and help to spread it. I'm not talking about like talking to people about it, like unsolicited advice, because people never want that, but if you can actually start to articulate some of these things to people, like when I just did my video the other day about um, where do you get your protein from or how much protein you need, you can watch that video up here. I'm gonna put a little card for that so you can click that and watch that video. But this is a really great argument or a great way to explain. If we can become better at articulating these things to people who have questions, um, that's gonna be one of our biggest weapons for spreading this message. It's really hard when you get put on the spot, you know? It's so hard when you get put on the spot because if you don't, and I went through this for a lot of years in the beginning, because I, I knew the information was correct, but I didn't, it's not like I took it in college or something. It, you know, it's not like I heard these messages all throughout my life. I was just learning it and maybe you're just learning it too. So it's hard to articulate that and, you know, come right back at someone who has all these media messages in their head, like, oh, you're not getting enough protein, that kind of a thing, you know? These things are untrue, but it's um, important for us to try to figure out how to explain them and kind of keep that message going. So you're doing a great job by watching my videos and um, learning how you can explain these things a little bit more. I'll be doing this more in the future for sure to try and explain how you can explain it too. Um, let's all stick together. Thank you so much for watching. Um, as always, I will be back as soon as I can. I appreciate you guys' patience with me lately and um, take care. Talk to you soon. Bye!